Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a material for your landscape and have it so it auto paints on the cliffs for parts of your landscape that are steeper than a certain angle. So if you sculpt up a landscape and it gets past a certain angle, it will automatically paint a cliff texture there so you don't have to do it yourself. And this is very useful. And again, this is another request. And so if you have any requests for future videos, then just comment them down below and I'll make sure to see if I can get around to doing them. So what I've done by default is just delete everything that was in the third person example and it's just expand the post process and like mass importance and all that. But obviously you'll probably have your own map to do this on. So what we're going to do first is just import our textures. So I've gone and downloaded some off of some websites which I'll link a download to in the description down below. And there's also a video that I made on the best websites for free text and stuff which I'll also link down in the description and on screen now. So let's just import all of our textures and I'm also just going to make a new folder in the content browser here and just call this landscape and inside this I'll make another one called textures. I just like to keep things nice and organized. Let's also make another one here for cliff. Import all of my cliff textures in there. And the maps you want are a diffuse, a normal, and a specular map. These are the three main ones that we're going to be using today. So I've got them, and I'll just do the same for the other ones that I have as well. So I'll be back with you in a minute. So there we go. I now have all of my textures imported. So I've got cliff, grass, rock, and sand textures. And obviously you can use as many as you want, or as little as you want, and whichever ones. But these are the four ones I'm going to be using today. So what we're going to do now is create our actual landscape material. So we're just going to right click, and then create a new material. There we are. I'm just going to call this landscape underscore mat like that and then let's just open this up. What we're going to get first is, two, uh, is three texture samples so you just hold down T and left click to get the texture samples like this and then the top one I'm going to have as my grass and make sure that this is diffuse so grass underscore D and then get sand diffuse and then also rock diffuse. Again, use whichever ones you want, but make sure these three are the diffuse textures. So we now have our diffuse textures in here. I'm going to select these and move them over a little bit like that. And then we're also just going to get a layer blend node. So if we just right click and search for layer blend, it should be right at the top, I think. Yep, landscape layer blend. And then we're going to add some array elements over here in the bottom left. So we're going to add three because I have three different textures here, but obviously use as many as you need. So I'm just going to get one, two, and three. Then expand these like so. And then just name these accordingly. So the top one I'm obviously going to call grass. And then the second one I'm going to call sand. And the bottom one I'm going to call rock. And we want to make sure that the blend type of these is LB height blend on all of them. Like that. And we'll just put that in the middle and then we'll plug these in. So the white RGB line here from the grass will go into the layer grass and then the red one will go into the height grass. And do this again for all of your textures like so. So the white goes into layer, red goes into height like that. And then we'll just plug this straight into the base color like so. I'll just move this up a bit as well like that. And if these go if these go black, it's fine. It's just them calculating the texture, getting it all perfect, and compiling it all and stuff like that. So there's nothing to worry about. And then what we're going to do is just copy and paste this. So duplicate it another two times for our specular and normal maps, like this. So we'll get them like that. And I might just move this down so it's in the middle. There we go. And then obviously, as these are for specular and normal we're just going to change these in the texture samples as well so the middle one here this is going to be specular so these are diffuse at the top and the next are specular so we want ground specular then sand specular and finally rock specular and then the final three are the normal maps so we want ground normal then sand normal and finally rock normal like that and again we'll just plug these in so this one will go into the specular and this one will go into the normal like that then what we want to do is be able to manipulate the tiling of these so they look nice and good in the level 
So the way we're going to do that is get a texture coordinate node. So we just right click, search for, search for texture coordinate, there we go. And then we want to get a scalar parameter as well, so hold down S and left click. I'm going to call this grass param for parameter. And then we want to put these into a multiply node, so drag out and get a multiply, or you can hold M and left click like that. And for the grass parameter, we're going to set a default value of 1 to this. So as this is the grass parameter, we're just going to plug these this into all of the grass textures here. So the grass diffuse, grass specular, and grass normal, like that. Again, I'll just put that so it's straight. I like to keep things nice and organized and looking neat. And then we'll do this for all three. So we want the grass, sand, and rock. Put them here like that and then this one again will be sand and this one will be rock and it's all the same apart from the name and where you plug them in so then this one so then the sand will go into the sand UVs and you want to make sure you plug it into the UV so the top part on the left like this and the default value wants to stay as one and we're doing this so that we can then manipulate it later on in a material instance which we'll make afterwards and then let's do the rock like this. Perfect. And then what we're also going to do is now we're going to make the actual cliff part so that it auto generates the cliff texture for us. So we'll just move all that back a bit and then we're going to want to get the three texture samples again. So just copy and paste three texture samples here like that. And then we're going to set these to our cliff. So we want cliff diffuse cliff specular and finally cliff normal like that and then just below it down here we want to get a world aligned blend like that and this is going to calculate the, the steepness of the landscape to then change the material so then we're just going to add in some constant values which which I found on the unreal forums so if you hold down one and left click you can get two constant values and then we'll set the first one to the top one up here to a value of seven and the bottom one to a value of minus 2.2 and then we're going to plug the 7 into the blend sharpness and the minus 2.2 in the blend bias and like I said this just calculates the steepness of the material landscape sorry and then also how much it should fade so you can mess around with these values to get a perfect for you but this was a good one I found on the Unreal forums and we want to come up here and get a 3 LARP node so hold down L on your keyboard and left click get 3 LARP nodes like that and we're going to plug the A in of the white line of the texture samples here. So plug those in like that. Again, I'm just going to make these look a little neater. There we go. And then we want to plug in to the B, we want the layer blends. So we want the layer blend for the diffuse into the B of the diffuse of this LERP. And then the specular, we want it to the specular. And the normal into the normal like that. And then for the alpha values, what we want to do is get the alpha out of the world aligned blend. So the alpha out of this, we'll just go into the alpha of diffuse and alpha of the specular. But then for the normal, we want to have with explicit normals, so the bottom one there, into the normal of that lerp there. And then we're just going to plug these lerps into the correct outputs here. So the diffuse, the top one here, we're going to base color, the specular, the middle one, we're going to specular, and the normal bottom one, we're going to normal, like that. I might just move these out out a tiny bit just to make it look a bit more neat to get easier to read Move that just there so I just like to make it look neat like so and then once again we're going to want to manipulate the UVs of this so we're just going to select and copy these three here and duplicate them there so we want the texture coordinate parameter and multiply node so then we're going to change the grass parameter to obviously cliff param keep it as a default value of one and just plug this into all the values of the cliff texture samples here like that there we go and then we want to change the specular amount so you manipulate that UV as well and this is because it, otherwise the material can be quite shiny so what we want to do is just offer this lerp here where we've got the texture uh, we've got the specular sorry just come out of the lerp get a multiply node plug that into the specular so it goes in like that then out of the B, we want another parameter, so hold S, left click. I'm going to call this spec amount. 
or specular amount, whatever you want, and then just plug that into the B like that. And then set this to a default value of 1 again, and we can manipulate this later on. So this is now the material itself done. So we're going to make the actual landscape and then the instance and manipulate all the values to make it look good. So you can just save and apply that. So this is it done. It should look something like this. So then let's just minimize and make a landscape. So what we're going to do is go to our nodes tab up here and then go to landscape. And then for the material, we're obviously going to get our landscape material, put that in there. Actually, no, actually, we can make the instance now. So if we just right click and create material instance and enter to get landscape material instance, we can then put that material onto there. And the instance just simply allows us to manipulate all the different values. So that's good. And then for the actual size of it, it doesn't matter too much, but a good way to help with optimization is if you see here, the overall resolution is the actual size in meters. So this is 505 by 505 meters. But if we change it from one by one to two by two section, and then from eight by eight components to four by four, we get the same size, but with half the amount of components. That was 32, it's now 16. And you can do this for any size, but it means that we just use half the amount of total components. So it's a lot better on optimization and your version and your engine especially for people who have uh, not as good computers. So I'm just going to make this a little smaller, I'll make it 2x2 two two, so we then have 250 by 250 meter wide material. Uh, landscape, sorry, doesn't need to be too big. So then if we just hit create there, we now have our, our landscape created. So now if up in this top up here we go to the paint tab, we now have all of our layers here. And we want, what we want to do is create layer info. So if we hit the plus there to create layer, in, layer info and make it a weight, a weight blended layer normal, like that. And I'm just going to actually make a new folder for these. So I'll hit new folder in landscapes and call this layer info. And don't worry if your landscape is black, that's just because we haven't made the layers yet. So then again, hit the plus, create layer info, weight blended layer. And then I'm going to put this into the folder I just made, so landscape, pictures, and then layer info. Hit OK. We now have our grass layer info, and if we do the same for sand, weight blended layer, into that folder again, just again to keep it all organized, and do the same for rock. And you'll notice we don't have a cliff layer here, and that's because it is just doing it automatically, we don't paint it on which is why I also made the rock one, just in case we want to paint on some rocks ourselves. Now I'll just do the final one, layer info, OK. And you can see it's already starting to come together. We've got the grass in here already. And you can see it doesn't look very nice because of all the tiles. And also my textures might not be too great because I had to just get them off the website for free, just for the purpose of the tutorial. But we have all of our layer info now, so we can actually start painting. So if I just turn down the size a bit and start painting. So we can select the layer up here. So I want to paint grass, I can, it's already there. You can paint sand. The first time you do it, it will have to recompile all the shaders and stuff again, so it will look like this. This shouldn't take too long, and then after that you can just do it straight on. You see this shaders compiling up here, it shouldn't take too long. And there we are, we now have the sand in there as well. And if we want rock, we can do that. Again, it just needs to sh compile the shaders because it's the first time using this uh, layer this texture and stuff on the material but we can see that we have the grass here the sand here and then we'll have the rock here when it compiles like that there we go now we also have the rock here so we've got the rock the grass and the sand and then if we also go to the sculpt tool up at the top here and sculpt up we can see that we will get the cliff there like that so if I actually just turn down the strength the size a little bit just to get it look in a bit better. You can see that the rock is starting to come through. It doesn't look too great at the moment, but that's because we need to just start tiling it a bit better. But it is there. So now if we actually open the material instance like this, we can start uh, messing about with these values here. So we just close the material and just minimize this so we can actually still see the uh, landscape here and we can start with the grass first we'll enable all of them 
like this and I'll start with the grass first so we change it just move it all the way down it's already starting to look a bit better 0 0.2 might be a good value to start with maybe maybe a bit higher 0 0.3 yeah, this is just values that you mess about with yourself. You just get into the level and look around. I think just for me, 0 0.25 looks quite good. And obviously, you might want to spend more time on it if it's for your actual game, but just for a tutorial, this is fine to me. Just show you how to do it. And usually, they work quite well together, so similar values. So, 0 0.25 looks like that. 0 0.3. I like 0 0.2, that looks quite good the rock there and then the sand again I'll put 0.2 to see and then we we'll just up it a bit 0.15 might be quite good yep so the sand looks like this now the rocks like that and then the sand is like this looks a lot better than what it did to start with and then if we start messing about with the cliff as well down to 0.1 you see it starts to stand out a bit more and the reason why it's kind of blending in a bit, it looks a bit green, is because remember the texture I actually chose is quite green as well. Um, just to make it sort of blend in a bit more so the green comes through, but in hindsight I realized that wasn't maybe the best idea. But <laughs> these are just ones that again you can mess around with, but this will work and look a lot better with different textures. So, but you can see the, the actual rock texture is coming through, it's just the colors aren't amazing that I chose. So if you set it to 0, it obviously goes away, set it to 0.1, comes through, 0.4, it's a bit more subtle. Point 0.15 looks quite good, you can see it there, it just looks a lot different and that's a little bit of something else. I think obviously you minimize this. Sculpt up, you can see it appearing in real time, like that, there's the cliff texture there and the grass on top and you can't overwrite this so it will always be there unless obviously you change it in the actual material itself but it does mean that you can then just paint anywhere you like around it and it won't uh, go over it so that that will always stay there you can obviously the shaders need to compile again but just to show you that it does actually work that's why I do it over here as well if I up it up, then the uh, cliff will stay there. So you can see it's just a bit green. And then if I want to change this back to grass, you can see that it doesn't go over the rocks. The cliff will always stay like that. But the sand, or whatever you're painting on, can go over the top of what is already there, like that. And then if we get in, look around, got the grass here, a bit of sand, and then the cliff there, the rock again, that's still compiling, but we've got the rock there, and then again, cliffs with this. So this looks, so this looks really good, so I'm quite happy with this. So I think that'll be it for this video, we've done everything we wanted to do. We've set up our different textures in the landscape, so we can paint on different textures here. So we've got our rock texture here. And we've got our grass, our cliff, which does it automatically. And we've also got sand, and again the cliff here, which looks a lot better with the sand. And again, this is fully customizable, so you can change all the different parameters here to get the different values that you want, and will look better for your own textures. You can choose your own different textures and add your own ones in as well, in here, and change the parameters again. And actually, also I remember we should also change the uh, specular. We didn't do that. So you can see it's not too bad here, but it can be quite shiny. So we change the spec down to zero, there's no shine on it. 0.1 is just a bit. 0.3 is a bit more. So obviously this doesn't work too well with the landscape I've got here, but that's how you change the shininess. So that's where I'm going to leave it for this episode. We've uh, got the automatic cliff texture painting as well as all the other textures that we want. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. And so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.